Hey everyone, welcome to another Elixir live stream with Let's Code Elixir. So my name is Zach Siri and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about enums and enumerables and what they are um, and how we need to use them, you know, all over our application. So we've already actually started working with enumerables. We have lists and we have maps and, you know, there's a few other data structure, but those are kind of like the main um, data structure that we're currently using in our application. So those of you who are just watching this for the first time, uh, let me quickly walk through uh, what we're building. We're building a game database. So, um, and we're starting out, we're not using any kind of like MySQL or Postgres or any kind of abstraction layer. We're kind of building that whole persistence layer ourselves. And um, at the end of this project, we will have a fully functional database system for storing reading, um, you know, get retrieving and, um, you know, modifying games data. Like, why by games, I mean, like, games like Resident Evil, you know, we'll, we'll store, like, a record of it. Uh, we'll have, like, a, you know, all the kind of, like, the data that we need for the game. And, uh, you know, we've already covered, like, how to create data structures or how to create, like, those columns, you know, for our database. Um so the reason why we're doing this is because, you know, it's a good activity to use as a learning exercise for Elixir uh, because, you know, generally I can cover all the concepts as we move along. So that's kind of the goal. So um, what we're going to be covering in this episode is that we're going to cover um, some enumerable, some some of the functions, some sorry, some of the algorithms in the enum module. So... Um, what we need to do is right now we have a project. So let's take a look at the project here. So we've got this project here. I'm going to start it up uh, and then I'm going to do a kind of like a retrospective uh, on what we have. So we have a games and if I do all games, we can retrieve the game that is stored in our bin file over here. So um, and we're using the data structure that we created here. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is we, we want to right now we can add um, games to this database. Uh, but what we generally want to do is on top of adding, we also want to be able to modify these games. So like change the name, change the year, change the publisher or whatever. Like the ability to kind of like create, read, update, delete. Those are kind of like the main operations we need from a database. So um, right now we can create records and put them in the database, but we need the ability to edit it. And with that comes another requirement, right? So to be able to actually reference our data, we need to not reference it using the actual data. Because, for example, Resident Evil 3 has another name. You know, uh, it's called Biohazard. So maybe we want to use Biohazard as a name. Um, and, you know, but then the thing is, it's still the same record. So um, the way we solve this in databases, we have what's called a primary key. And generally, um, you know, there's many ways of doing it. Some people use UUID or whatever. But in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to use, um, we're going to use a sequential. So basically, when you create a record, it doesn't have uh, an ID. And then when you persist it into our database, the database automatically generates that ID for us. So that's kind of like what we're going for in this. So. If you think about it, so I'm going to switch to my iPad here and I've got it um, open. So what I'm going to talk about is like basically, um, you know, the the kind of like the algorithm that we're going to use for um, doing this. So right now we have a list of games, right? So we'll have like a, a game one here, a game here, a game, right? So we want to kind of like, um, you know, find the game. So first of all, when we add an item to the game, we want it to assign one, two, three uh, to the game, right? So this is going to be a new field uh, called ID, right? And basically what we want to do is when we add another game, it's going to find the, the largest, um, you know, ID that we have and then return us the ID and then we do a plus one and then we get four, right? And then that's what the the primary key of that new game that we're inserting is going to be, right? So game ID 4 will be the new record. So that's kind of what we're going for. Um, we are going to need to um, basically use uh, the enum module. 
So I'm going to switch over to my browser here to show you the enum module and kind of like all the functions in there. So there's all these functions that you can use. And if we look down this list, so let me just open the browser here. So if we look down this list, there's a function here um, which we can use called uh, min or max by. Um, and basically we can pass the innumerable. So this case would be the list of games that we have and then we can supply a function. So that is pretty cool. So we can supply a function to state what is it that we want to use to determine what is the maximum value of something. So in this case, we can say use the game, right? So let me just switch to my iPad. Let I want to use the game.id to determine the max value. So since in this case, our ID is going to be an integer, it's going to have no problem doing that calculation for us. So um, just to recap what we're trying to achieve here. So we're going to have a list of games. Um, so this is a, an enumerable and we're going to pass this into the enum dot max by function, right? And then basically we'll find the maximum, the game with the maximum ID. And then we're going to add one and then use that as the the next item in the sequence as the next primary key in the list. So, all right, so let's jump into the code and actually start to work this out. Um, so we need to basically modify our data structure here, right? Um, so we need to do an ID and we also need, um, you know, some kind of like a algorithm here um, that you know, we'll insert, we'll calculate the maximum value and insert it into, into the data before it inserts into the database for us. So now um, I added the ID to here. Uh, so we don't actually need to enforce the ID because initially before the data is written to disk, it's going to be null. So when we generate the game by default, it's going to have an ID nil. And, and that's good for a few reasons because um, we don't always want every record, you know, that we create to have an ID because what if we didn't, we created it, but we never persisted it to disk. So this is another thing we can use to determine if something is actually persisted in our database or is it just something that was stored in memory. So, um, so having the ID and not enforcing the keys allows us to do, you know, all that stuff. So let's go over here. Um, so what we want to do is because we have all games over here, we can actually um, find the the last ID. So for example, last ID equals um, enum dot max by all games. So this is going to give us um, you know the the all the games that we have in the database, and then we're going to do an fn game, and then we're going to do game dot id end so this will actually return us the game um so what we actually need to do is we need to um call another function to get just the id right we don't want anything else we just want the id of the game so um doing it like this is going to allow us to do exactly that so map dot get so just in case you didn't know um a struct is also a map and which means you can apply, um, you know, you can also apply the, um, hang on, let me just switch back to the code. You can also apply uh, using the map.get function on a struct. So here we're going to get the ID. So we have one little problem here, which is that currently the game that's in here um, does not have an ID because it's based on the old data structure. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to delete this database for now and then basically um, when we insert the new game obviously it'll have the id now when we delete the game we may not have anything right so we need to be able to tell it that if you don't have anything just return me zero and then i'll just add one and then so the first item will automatically become one id is one right so it seems like this is going to get pretty complicated well more complicated than we anticipated so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a private function called calculate um, last ID. And then I'm actually going to pass, 
I'm actually going to use the all games in here. So all games. So if all games um, equals an empty list, do zero else, then I'm going to do all games and I'm going to do enum dot max by fn game game dot id n. So this is going to return us the game, but we want the ID. So we're going to do map dot get ID. All right. So that should return us um, the maximum, the, 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 the maximum ID. Then um, what we can do is we can take the last ID and we can add one. So here I'm going to get the last ID by doing calculate last ID function. And so that gives me the last ID that I have in the game list. So um, now what I can do is I can take the game that is passed in here. So this will be the game that is passed in without the ID. So the ID will be nil. Um, so this does another thing, right? This makes sure that we only add games that have not been added to the database yet. Um, so there's no duplicate record. So that doing that pattern matching solves that one more problem. So now at this point, what we need to do is we need to, um, before we do this new list and writing the file, we need to do the um, game with ID. And then we're going to do a struct. And then here we're going to do game. And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a ID and then um, I'm going to do a last ID plus one. So by doing this, I get the game with the ID and then I and then I do create the new list and then I save it to the database that we have. So that um, should pretty much work. So now let's actually give this a whirl. Um, so let me just check if the live stream's all good. All right, sounds good. Everything's working. We're getting two likes. So yeah, like and comment and let us know how we're doing. Uh, we're constantly looking to improve. So in this episode, I added like an iPad, you know, a scribble explanation to explain what I'm, what we're actually going to be doing before we actually do it. So yeah, let me know what, uh, also what you guys and gals want, want to see in the next episode. So I know. Um, so put that in the comment uh, below. Um, so yeah, all right, let's continue. So now we have this um, built. So let's go and... Uh, start this in IEX. So I'm going to just enlarge this a little bit. So first I'm going to create the game. So game equals, um, and then we're going to do a games.entities.game. So if you don't understand why I'm typing all these things in, please go back and watch the older episodes. I covered all of this stuff. We didn't skip anything. So yeah, there's a whole series now. There's like at least three, four episodes so yeah, check that out. Um, I'm also going to put the link to the playlist in the description. So for your convenience. So now let's say I'm cr creating a game called um, Resident Evil 3. Um, and then uh, I have the publisher, which is uh, Capcom. And the year is 2020. Um, I think I misspelled something. Publisher... Publisher not found. Hmm. Let's see. Why does it say that? Ah, okay. So I use the word producer, not publisher. All right. So um, let's go into here and modify it to producer. All right, so there we go. So we actually have a game now which we can add to the database. So let's go and try that out. So games.add game and voila, look at that. We have a game with the ID one. So let's create another game and then see if the ID is two. It should be technically. So now that we've added this, so if I call all game, so games.all games, we will see Right. So now based on the code that we wrote in here, um, the next game should be ID two. So I'm going to create another game and I'm going to call it games dot entities dot game. And then here it's going to be name 
Doom Eternal. And then the producer is id software. And then 